Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. Working on a Poland tractor right now with a Briggs & Stratton engine in it. And this tractor came in with a hard to start condition during the course of the summertime. And we found out that what it is, is when you put the throttle up on a choke position, it actually will stay choking. And that's a issue that I've come across several times. I figured I'd throw it out there to everybody. And this is in case you're trying to start your tractor and you have an issue of it just keeps black smoke and it's not it won't stop choking and this is what we found all right this is on a Briggs and Stratton single cylinder 12 and a half horsepower engine but this covers a whole variety of different single cylinder Briggs and Stratton engines you have your throttle over here and it takes you up to the fast position and then it takes you up to the choke position and what's happening is when you bring it down off a choke it's not disengaging the choke so I want to go over that with you now now this has already been repaired, but I want to do a video on it and hopefully you'll be able to understand. So down here, what we have is the throttle. Okay, now, if you looked at this plate right here, when I take the throttle up to fast, all right? So when the throttle goes up to fast right here, okay, we're showing this down here, this plate, this plate right where my finger is. Watch that plate move up and down, okay? Now the choke is right here. This lever here puts the choke on this little black lever under here, okay? So that's what happens. Now, what happens is when you put it up the choke, okay? Puts the choke on right here, the choke lever's on. When you bring it down off a choke, this choke lever right here stays in the on position, all right? And it just keeps choking. And what that is, is this little black lever here, this little choke plate inside here, it actually gets stuck in the carburetor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this apart and then show you guys what we have found and how I, I fix that. And as you can see right now, it's working perfectly fine. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you the tools that I use. Now, actually, you can see this right here is we crimp the fuel line. It's not the greatest way to do it, but it works and the fuel line does come back. Uh, you, there is special fuel line clamps that don't have little um, teeth on it, but it, I've never had an issue. I've been doing this for 30 years and this is exactly how I do it. It clamps it and we take the fuel line off. But let me show you some tools. Okay, we got three different pair of pliers. It's what you guys choose. Um, you got two needle nose pliers, a regular set of pliers. We're gonna be using a 716 socket, a 38 socket, and a 516 socket. I'm gonna use an extension. You can use a quarter inch ratchet. You can use wrenches if you have wrenches. Um, this is my fuel line tool that I love to use. It's actually a plastic um, removal. It, it takes plastic um, fender uh, deck, I forget what they call them, the, um, plastic, um, Fasteners, it takes all these things off, but I use it great. It uses, um, it's awesome to use for taking the fuel line off of the carburetor. And then I use a electric ratchet, which makes things a lot easier. All right, so I'm gonna go over and we'll start taking apart this uh, engine here and we'll go from there. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the fuel tank and that's gonna be three eighths we're just gonna move it back, actually. We're just gonna move it off to the side so we can get to the to the uh, bolts that are on the back side of this housing. Just make sure you don't lose any of your hardware. Now this will bring us up out of the way a little bit, just enough to get to these back bolts right here. And it just makes it easier to get a ratchet in there. Um, you, you can move the tank. In fact, you can move the tank out of your way. And actually, I'm going to take off the fuel line to the carburetor now because we can just take this tank out of our way. So a pair of needle nose pliers takes the fuel line off. And then there's a special pair or a special tool that I use. To... This, this is very nice to get behind here and it just pushes off the fuel line. If you can, you could probably get these at your local uh, hardware store or any kind of automotive store, and then it just pulls off right there. We're just gonna put this tank out of the way, very easily to do. And then with the three eighths, you're just gonna take off your bolts around the outside here. And these actually, this one here has got shoulder bolts. So you gotta make sure you put the shoulder bolts back in the right spots because the front ones are a little, the front ones are different than than the uh, rear ones. All right, and we're gonna have to take the air cleaner off. Actually, I probably didn't have to take it out. 
take your front bolts off your housing. And as you can see, these bolts are a little shorter with the, with the shoulder. So just make sure you put them back in the right spots. All right, now this, I think we gotta take the dipstick out. We may or may not have to, let's try it without it. Now it gets pretty tight where the neck to the carburetor comes into the housing here. It gets very tight here. So you kind of have to wiggle and jiggle that off. And then you can come slide it right up. I didn't have to take the air cleaner off, but it worked out well. All right, so now we have, this was the problem spot right here. This was hanging up. And because it's plastic, that's our issue. And if somebody ever sprayed any kind of gum cutter inside this carburetor, that would actually make this plastic swell a little bit. But we have it working right now, but what happens is it gets stuck in the on position and it does not go back. And even though it has a spring, sometimes that spring can break. But lately I have noticed a lot of these have been getting stuck and the spring is working just fine. And we've repaired this already and it works just fine with the spring that's on there. But taking the rest of this off, you got a, a 7 16 here, nut, and a 7 16 on the other side. You do have a rubber um, hose that has to come off your intake here. So you take that rubber hose off. And I'm going to use an extension to get my 7 16 nuts off here. Oops. I need 7 16 And again, you don't want to lose these guys. You might want to do this in your garage. Let's drop them on here. Okay, so to get the carburetor off here, you have these two studs. These two studs actually have 5 16 Use a, a socket or you can use a wrench. All right, now we have this loose enough for the video purposes, but you're going to take these off here. That's going to drop your carburetor. Now you do have, let me go back to this. Okay, so when this comes off here, you have an O-ring right here. This O-ring, once they pop out, they're a little bit tricky to get back in again. You may need to get another O-ring if it doesn't fit properly, but it's very important that that seals properly. This one here is in good condition. We're gonna reuse that. All right, back to the, uh, taking off these 5 16 guys. Now, you can either take off the spring first on the carburetor, which is up here. All right, we have, you have your choke lever, and then you have your throttle lever here. Now it has a small spring on it right here, up here. You can take that off now versus later. I'm actually gonna take it off now because it makes it a little bit easier. And you gotta be careful, you don't wanna bend it. I've bent these things. You just try not to bend them. Take that off, that just makes it easier because me being one-handed, it's just easier for me to do it now. All right, so take these guys off and then this carburetor will drop. All right, so when I take the carburetor off of here, this gasket sometimes will stay on like this one did. That's a good thing. Now, I just pull out the choke, turn it sideways here, pull the choke arm out like that. Just remember with the video, you can go back and watch this, but you take the choke arm off, you can just pull this out of your way. And then this guy here goes down and it'll slide out right like that. Just leave that alone, just right there. Oops. And then your carburetor is off. Now this is where it's gonna be full of fuel, and even though this one's probably empty because we just did the carburetor, um, you wanna drain this, drain the fuel out of it by tipping it onto, you know, into a paper or whatever. Just gonna, you're gonna have a mess on your hands, so, so the bowl's full of gasoline. But this is what we're gonna be dealing with today. As you can see, this is a plastic rod, and what we've, and I'll show you what we've done. We're gonna go to the bench now. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to pull this out. Now, these are just plug and play. <laughs> you pull it out and you push them in. All right, pair of pliers. Just make sure you remember. You can always remember how they go by looking at how they are now. You got two little half moons right there. They go nice and they, they seat properly right here. So you want to make sure that you remember where they go. Be careful you don't bend this, but we want to pull it straight out. Comes right out, laid down. Now, this is going to come out. 
straight up. Now it's gonna be a little bit tight on the one that doesn't work properly. We've already done this. Make sure you remember where that spring goes. And it's really hard to see in this video, but the spring tab goes up top, pushes against this plate right here. All right, now this is a plastic choke um, a guide here. This, this is plastic. What we have done is found that the bottom of this gets very, I don't know, swollen, as you say, but you would think a hard plastic wouldn't swell. Maybe it's from dirt, but it gets stuck and it, this will not move properly. So you have to, what we do is we get a piece of sandpaper, all right, and we just back and forth. Make sure you don't do it too much in one spot. You just want to get a little bit of that off. All right, so that's all we're doing. Now, sometimes on the top, it can also happen. So you may have to figure out a way to get to this top and do the top also. But once you sand it a little bit at a time, you put it back in here and then you feel how loose it'll get. So that's pretty much what we have done to fix that problem is that it was just swelling. It's just swelled up right here and it wasn't, there was no dirt on it. It was just very, uh, very strange that it happens. This is aluminum and this is plastic. So it must have uh, a little bit of, a little bit of spray in there from a gum cutter would do it. I, I have seen this happen a lot more than not. So this is a very common thing and it's very, it, it'll frustrate you. The tractor will not start. It basically will choke the tractor out until it doesn't run. And then you're wondering what's going on. And this is actually stuck in the, in the closed position. So this will eliminate that. Now I have found that, I'm gonna take my glove off here. It's a little tricky to get this spring back on. You gotta make sure you put it on correctly. And it goes against this tab. All right, what I've found how I've done it is I spin it around the other tab here, spin it around to get your tension. And then you hold it, it's the tension's there. The tension, the other part, the other, the other little rod that comes out here from the spring has to go on the back side of this little tab right here. Okay, so we're gonna pull it around so it's taut and you got tension on it. You put the rod back down in here and you have to get it set into the bottom hole of the carburetor. And it's a little tricky. I've had a hard time getting this thing set in here. You gotta get it lined up in the bottom. And then once you get it lined up, push it all the way down and then let go of the tab, and that should set it. Okay, so now it's spring-loaded, and that worked out pretty well. Then you put your choke plate in, straight on in, and it should click into, and you, you always have the little, you can tell where it's supposed to line up, and then when you check it, just make sure it's nice and even, everything lines up right, boom, it's good to go and then you will not have this sticking on you at all. So just remember, it's a plastic rod that actually gets stuck either in here or up top here, and you just do a little bit of sanding on each side. Do not use any kind of chemicals. It, it's not good for the carburetor in general. You don't need to as far as getting this thing cleaned up. And then pretty much put it back the way it was. Just, uh, have to put the throttle back on. Throttle linkage there. And then I'm going to put the choke, now this is hard for me to hold it there, but choke lever comes up from the bottom. And, and the hole has a wear mark on it, so we know, and you should be able to tell by the wear marks how they go. And this guy will go right inside the little hole right there. This is where I'm going to put one screw in, bolt, and the gasket stayed on there, which was nice. But if you have to put that gasket in there or replace it, if it's bad condition, replace it. Put the other one in here. Now the hard part is getting this little teeny return governor spring that helps the, it's an anti-vibration spring it's supposed to be there for. You try doing it by hand or you can even, even use a nice little, see if I got a little needle nose pliers here and without bending it. Put that back in its hole like that and you get these guys snugged up and make sure you tighten them there is no real special torque for these you can just tighten them up okay and then you have your outer guy here 7 16 nuts
All right, now you can check this operation by throttling up your throttle, okay, to the fast position, and then up and choke, okay? So you can see how this operates. I'm gonna do it, it's in choke, down and fast, up and choke, down and fast, and that, as you can see, is working perfectly fine. So it's what's doing what it's supposed to be doing, and we got the problem fixed. All right, so pretty, basically that this is the problem where these plastic rods actually just start to get a little bit corrosion or they, they actually get a little, as I say, they uh, get a little bit fat, but they, I don't know if it swelled or not, but it definitely was sticking. So if you ever come across your tractor that when you put it up on start and you have the choke in a, you know full position and it just stays choking, that is something to look for right here, is that your choke plate may be, your choke um, may be sticking in the on position. So I'm not gonna put the rest of it together because you guys get to just and you can uh, figure it out from putting the, just rewinding the video as far as how everything comes across. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you guys have any comments and if you wanna ask me any questions, you can do so through YouTube or my website, johnsonsmallages.com. And please subscribe. Thanks for watching.